You know, I was just uh, sitting there thinking, I, 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 I don't know, um, I, I couldn't understand the cry of Sister Naomi's heart there, but I know the Lord does. Uh, he's the one that gave every tongue, and He understands every tongue. And I can't help but believe the cry of her heart is, is pretty much on the same vein that all of his children this morning, as, you know, I, I was just thinking of that, that last song, every time it's sung, it's a prayer. And um, I believe we pray it as we sing it. Lord, we want you to be the center. Um, we want you to be, you know, that, that last, one of the last phrases there, that be my, be my life, because he is our life. We want him to be the reason we live. Knowing that he is our life, that he's the only life there really is. And um, I had a thought. I, I'm not, I don't know what the Lord has for us this morning, but I just want to share this short thought and just trust it with the Lord. I thought about where the Lord was telling those who were, um, there were among those that were listening to him were some that, expressed desire to, you know, to be disciples. But he told them, he says, if you continue in my word, and in that phrase alone, there's so much. Um, you know, I, he, he, was, he was saying, take the more earnest heed to what I share with you. Uh, keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking and you'll receive. Continue in my word. And he says, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And I was thinking, you know, folks, the word declares that he is the truth. He's the spirit of truth. And um, to know the truth is far more than the, the mental ascent, the, the mental knowledge. And that's part of it. But God made us in His image. He made us with the, with the ability to be able to understand and, and reason. That's why He says in, in one place in the Scripture, come, let us reason together. I made you in my image. He longs to reason with us. He longs to impart truth the living truth himself to us through his word. And that knowing the truth is not just understanding the knowledge of what he would share in his word, but knowing it experientially, knowing it in experience, laying hold of it, trusting and believing him to engraft it into our, word, uh, into our hearts, and part of that process, process is using it. That's the vital part of receiving the truth, is believing it to the point we stand on it, believing it to the point that we put it into practice, and we will truly know it. It's that way that we actually come to know Him, because He is the Spirit of truth. And... Um, I don't know, that's the, that was the cry of my heart this morning as we were singing that. Lord, we want to know you. And we want you to be the center. And uh, I want to know him intimately. And I, and I believe a vital part of that, as, as we heard recently, is that time that we take to wait before him and to commune with him. Um, like I said, walking in the Word. He said, ask, you shall receive. And, and that, again, the tense of that verb, he's saying, ask and keep on asking, and you shall receive. Seek and keep on seeking, and you will find. <coughs> Knock and keep on knocking, and it will be opened unto you. I, I'm thankful for how the Lord in, in, here in the last little while has, has stirred our hearts. And, you know... We, we've said this so many times, but it's so true. The hour that we live in, it is so very easy 
in our flesh to just go to sleep. And I'm believing God to awaken us and awaken us to the realization that we need awakening and to cry out all the more. Lord, I don't want to just wake up today. Spiritually speaking, I'm talking about I want to be awake every day. And I want to know the truth. I want, by God's grace, to lay hold of it and use it and walk in it and believe and receive. He has given us, folks, everything that's good, everything that's needed. Our Father has given us in Christ Jesus our Lord. And as Phil has said so many times, let's possess our possessions. Let's seek Him together with all of our heart and believe in Him, believe in him for that daily awakening that we need and that will cause us to lay hold of His Word as He shares it with us, uh, as we read it and study it, as He shares it with us uh, through our brother um, in the ministry and the teaching. Um, you know, and we've been, there's been a lot the Lord has shared with us concerning the body. And I believe that's vital. Vital truth that as we lay hold of it and as we use it, as we pray for one another, as we walk together, we'll know the truth. We'll know Him. And we will be set free. Free from self, first and foremost. That's the number one enemy we need to be set free from. This carnal mind, this carnal nature. But that's his promise, and I'm laying hold of it this morning, and I'm thanking him for it by faith. Praise God. You know, I know we say this a lot, but I, I really appreciate the presence of the Lord here today. You know, when we started the worship service, you know, there are all kinds of songs we sing. Some songs, many of the songs we sing today were songs of prayer. But you know, prayer is, it goes both ways. It's a communication. The very first song we sang, I was so very aware that the Lord was communicating with us in prayer. I mean, it was just real to me. It's like He was here saying, we're to worship in the Spirit and truth. But it was like He was saying, ask, you shall receive. It's like He wanted us to know that today. And it, this has to be personal and life to it. Uh, ask, you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. But this is what He really just opened. He said, open up your heart and yield. It's like he was here just communicating that this morning. Did y'all sense that? Just open up your heart and yield to the Holy Spirit. Boy, do we need joy in this hour because that's our strength and his everlasting joy he'll give to you. This scripture was quickened to me when we were downstairs and just came to me again up here and I was sort of wrestling with it because you know many times we do get things that are just for us but I'm going to read it. It's in Acts chapter 17 verse 24 this is when Paul was in Athens and there were I think folks were worshiping they know not what and he goes on here and he say the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands and he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him though he is not far from each one of us isn't that amazing you know that word says um, it's not like going up to heaven to bring him down or going to depths to bring him up the word's nice right now but this is a scripture that came to me and I don't know that I'm going to comment it. I might just read it and sit down unless the Lord gives me something else and I thought of this as we were singing the song Jesus be the sinner for in him we live and move and have our very being. Um, I really struggled with getting up here and I even asked Michael if it was okay. Um, but when we were singing that song this morning, Be the Center, it really touched me. Um, and you know that, 
and what dad said about us um, and him we live. Um, I remember throughout my life things that were the center of my life and how dead I was on the inside. And I remember feeling dead. And now that I feel the, the life that I feel now and um, being a part of the body of Christ and all of that, it's just there's no comparison to anything else in this world. And JP um, was up here one Sunday and he, he said to me and Michael, you know, to continue doing what we're doing now, coming to the services and to prayer meeting and fellowship and with the family of God like we do. And it really touched my heart because that's so important. Um, throughout my life, I've been on medicines that they've had me on. And I just came off the last one, the big one, Monday. And um, this is my medicine, you know. I don't need the drugs that they give me. You know, this is where I need to be. And, you know, coming here and hearing the word that comes forth and being a part and being here and hearing that. There's nothing in this world, there's no drug, nothing that they can give you that's going to make you right in your heart. You know, it's here, and it's with the people of God. And um, I just, I wanted to share how important it is to me, and, and just how important I really believe in my heart that it is, because there's nothing else. There's nothing else. Praise God. I appreciate this so much this morning. appreciate God's faithfulness just to meet with us right where we're at. And um, Lord will help me get out the thoughts. I've had a lot of the thought, the same thoughts that have come forth this morning, you know, and um, uh, that scripture that Joel read there, and uh, for in him we live and move and have our being. And what after what Kristen said there, without him we don't live. Without him we don't move. And without him, there, we don't have any being. We're on one road, and it's to destruction without him. And, uh, you know, what she said about the body of Christ and, and being a part is so vital, you know. The other scripture that I had this morning was contending for the faith. I think somebody mentioned it. Contending for the faith that is once delivered to the saints. Because Satan, he wants to divide us from our very source of strength. And that goes all the way back to our time with Christ every day. He will, like we've heard so much, he battles that. He hates that because when we cry out to God, there are things that happen in heaven that I don't know anything about, but he sends angels concerning us. He sends out forces and they, there's battles going on that we don't know about, you know, and, and we need to contend, man, for the time that God sets aside for us. I tell you what, he does not take lightly his son going to the cross, shedding his blood to give us what we have here. He does not take that lightly, and he wants us to contend. I tell you what, he gives us air in our nostrils, folks. We need to contend for the faith that he has for us that he wants to deliver us, you know. The other thought I had is, God, help me to examine my own heart to see. You know, Kristen, you talked about medicine. It, it ain't a lot of, you know, some people it's a pill, but it's things that these thorns and these thistles that come up and drown out what God has for us. It ain't got to be a pill. It can be a business. It can just be the cares of this life that will just suck the life right out of us. It will cause us not to come together. It will cause us just to grow cold like we've heard. And we do not need that, folks. It causes us to be lukewarm. God, help us to examine our hearts, to get honest with God and say, Come in, Father. O I open the door of my heart. Come in and do what is necessary to walk with you, to talk with you, because without that, we cannot be the branch that's attached to the vine, folks. We'll be broken off, thrown into the fire. God, help us to examine our lives to see what, God, what is it that is keeping me from fellowship, either with the body or with you? Because it, it, it's all intertwined in one. And that, those are the thoughts I had this morning. God, help us. He is willing, folks. He, he is so near. He is so near each one of us. It is not an accident, folks, that he is dealing with us right now the way he is. I'm just thankful for what he's doing, folks. Praise God. That's all I got.